Good morning and welcome to America's Home Cooking. Today I'm going to use whey and I'm going to be making a uh, sandwich bread. This is what it's called, the sandwich bread. Now this was recipe is a 1930s. Now you know when you buy breads today, when you make sandwiches, they pretty much just get soggy and hold. They used to use bread flour. It has more gluten to hold itself together and they made sandwiches out of this bread. But remember, in around 1850s, they started uh, mixing hard wheat and soft wheat together, and they ended up with the all-purpose flour that we use today. So anybody can make bread, and their breads will rise, and they'll be nice and fluffy and stuff because the uh, spring wheat, which we know is cake flour, you have to, it's very, very light, and it doesn't have volume to it. So when you make cakes and cookies and stuff, You'll, well, basically for cakes is what they use it for. You can see the fluffiness in, in the cakes and how moist they are and everything else. And you could even flatten them down. Now, when they made bread, that has more gluten and it sticks more together to a rib, as you want to say. So you have to knead this. But by adding the ratio that they make for all purpose, you have no problems. Your breads will rise and they'll be very light. But this recipe is the 1931s and it uses bread flour if you do not need it the time allotted to it and you don't or you don't use your mixer and beat it as long as it has to be you'll notice your bread will be heavier so women if they didn't know how to make bread or what to do properly they messed up in the kitchen they really did so this knowledge is being lost by them doing all these things to our food nobody can really go wrong they have the instant mixes the instant biscuits you crack it you spread it, you count it, you put it on, you get fluffy biscuits and everything else. But if you don't have that skill, if anything happens, and there's always a chance it could happen, you have to know these skills. So we're going to go ahead and make this. And this is made with bread flour. And when they say knead, they mean you're going to have to knead this bread. You're not going to be able to get away with it. You can use a mixer, but you'd have to use it for the same allotted time as kneading. Now we need four teaspoons of active yeast. Check your dates. I always say that, check your dates. I'm always gonna say that. This is gonna make two one pound loaves. And to this, we're going to add, now they say milk, but I told you I'm gonna show you how you use whey. So I have a cup of whey. I'm going to show you that you can use it. You don't have to worry. You're also going to need one-fourth of a cup of milk. I mean water. Scratch that milk. <laughs> you need a fourth of a cup of water. This is why my mother insisted that you're going to learn to make bread and stuff the proper way. Because if anything goes wrong... You depend upon these instant mixes, you won't get the results that you're looking for. Okay, they want two tablespoons of butter, which I have right here. Let me put that here, get a knife. Here it is. This is habit form of cutting butter up like this. My grandmother did this. Even if it was soft, she would sit there and do this, cut the butter up. And I said, but why? She said, you'll work it in, don't worry. Okay. All right, you're gonna need two tablespoons of sugar or honey, I'm using sugar today. And I noticed you'll probably say you're not proofing your yeast. Well, I know my yeast is good because I've worked with it already. We need one tablespoon of salt, so I'm not worried about it. Now, the only thing I am definitely going to do different is I am going to sit there and add one tablespoon. I mean one tablespoon. Sandy, get off of this tablespoon. I am going to add one cup 
of whole wheat flour so I can make this more nutritious. It'll be such a light whole wheat, you won't know the difference and it's not going to affect this. I know a lot of people who don't like whole wheat, but if you put just so much in, your family won't even know it. And this will just be like a half a cup of flour for each loaf that I make, because it makes two loaves. you're going to have to use uh, bread flour for this. Put this up here, get rid of this, and this, and this out of my way. So you're going to see the texture is going to be different. Everything's going to be different when you do this. If you don't have whey, just use one cup of milk. Because that's what the recipe calls for, is a cup of milk with a fourth of a cup of water. But I wanted to show you that you can use whey and get away with it. And I need All right, now you want another cup of water. Okay, add another cup of water. They insist. Okay, that's what you want. I'm one of those people that go in different directions. I'm like, all right, if you want to do it this way, then do it this way. All right, we have everything. Now we're just gonna be adding a lot of flour to this. I tell you, I get different recipes that go in different directions with me. So the rest is just gonna be adding bread flour. So the gluten in this bread flour is gonna do a really good job with everything that we have. show you what it looks like. Well, it's tacky enough that I can, and not runny, that I can sit there and put flour here. Now we're going to be using, how much flour are we going to be using in this whole thing? Because we're making two loaves. We should be near five to six. Yeah, five cups of flour. We've already added two and a half. So we have about another two and a half to add. So women really did have to know how to do it. Today they make such shortcuts that you can sit there and make anything, but you really aren't making anything, you're just putting a lot of things together. You're going to have to get hot water in your bowl. 
I have to move some things around so I can get the bowl in the sink. Butter will melt as you work your hands in it, though you see little pieces of it. As you work it, the butter will melt. And if you're using uh, a uh, mixer to do your mixing, 10 minutes you're going to have to run it with the bread paddle. get to kneading in a bit. I just have to get, get it to the point where I can knead it. Now, if you need more flour, if it's not smooth and elastic, we'll add more. Right now I have four and a half. Let's see, one, two, three. Maybe three and a half. Yeah, we might need more flour. So I'm going to be kneading this. Remember I showed you how to knead. You sit there, you fold this over, and you're turning at the same time both palms. You push away. Do a quarter turn, fold it over, press it down with your palms. And this is the act of kneading, which will get your bread activated and all excited. I should say the yeast will get all excited. So I will be back. I'm going to be doing this for 10 minutes. So I'll see you then. Okay, my bread is, uh, dough isn't taking much more. And this is all that I have left, which is approximately half a cup. So I'm not done kneading yet, but you can see it's coming together quite nice. Still have more. And this bread fights back. It's not, it's not easy because bread flour has more gluten in it, so this is going to hold better together. By the way, this bread does not go stale as fast as other breads. If you make your bread, I know the bought bread in the store has preservatives in it uh, that prevent it from going stale. The homemade bread goes stale in a short time. This is considered one that is very slow at getting stale, but it's a sandwich bread. As you can see, the gluten is much different in, in its, the way it's acting. And it's a light color. It's not white because I did add some whole wheat into it. you can see what kind of texture it is compared to the other ones. And yes, I'm pressing very hard on this. And you see how it's not sticking to the counter or anything? That tells me it took all the flour it could really take. I just have, what, this much left? I might as well take it in and just finish it up. And then I'll show you what smooth and elastic is, so you have a good idea. See, if you're angry and you make bread, believe you me, you can work a lot of your tension out. And if men are angry, they can go out and work. Take care of the yard, repair furniture and stuff. Believe you me, you can work your tension out. You don't have to go to the gym.
that is smooth and elastic. Okay, this is what it's going to look like. Now you gotta, you have to wash that bowl that we put the uh, ingredients in to get the dough with hot water because it has to be quite warm. When you put this bread dough in here, so it will rise. A cold bowl will take longer. But when you make this bread, you can actually tell the texture because it's all bread flour. You can see how the texture acts differently because of that gluten. You know, some of the nicest things that happen in the kitchen that I love about the kitchen is you have your cultures, you have the canning going, you always smell food being made in the kitchen. It is the heart of the home, not the living room or anything else. The kitchen is because that's where all the life is. I mean, when you make your own cultures and stuff and buttermilks and stuff, you have all this live culture you have to care for. So there's a lot of life in the kitchen. inside of this bowl. And why do we do it? That's to keep the dough from sticking to it and drying out. You turn it upside down, twist it so you coat the top of it, flip it over, and you cover it up and put it in a warm place and we're going to let it rise. You know, I've heard people talk about uh, cultures and bread. They didn't know about it till not long ago and everything else, but I think they did. I don't think it was a short time that we started learning about sourdough and yeast. That's just my personal opinion. I think that they did make it, they made it different, and they used different things. But I think we've been using this a long time. I have to move you over here now. But I'll see you when uh, that rises and we'll continue making bread. Okay, as you can see, my bread has doubled. Now, we're gonna do something different because remember, this is sandwich bread we're making and it's bread flour, completely bread flour. You're gonna take this bread, this dough out, and you're gonna knead it some, maybe about three minutes about that long. Now hold on a minute. Ugh. So knead it for three minutes and then we're going to let it rise again. You're going to cover it and let it rise again. And then we'll be making the loaves. So as you can see this is having two separate right three right well uh, two separate rises before we even shape it instead of the regular one that you know. Like I said, they did bread much different than they do today. Today, everybody's guaranteed their bread is going to rise. In those days, you weren't guaranteed anything. When it came to bread making, you had to know what you were talking about and you had to know what you were doing.
And that's the only reason I can understand so much is when you learn all these techniques and stuff and you read old recipes, you can bring old recipes up to date. And I'm gonna show you how nice this dough looks. This bread has it. You can feel the texture is so much different. You really have to work this one. You can say this is a good bread to make when you're angry. <laughs> you can sit there and say that and take all your tension out on the bread and by then you're too tired to stay angry. And see, I used whole a little bit of whole wheat, but it didn't change the color. It's just a little darker than what you would have with white flour. Oh, I'm just about done kneading this the second time. Okay, you're gonna put it upside down again in this bowl, turn it to grease it, and make sure everything is greased. And you're gonna cover up and we're gonna let it rise again till it doubles. Let me get my towels. Now you see why these towels always are so stained. Because they get, they get a workout. Kitchen towels take a beating. You always have to replace them if you do cooking. Matter of fact, uh, after Friday, we're going to make some Dijon mustard. I think you would like that. I have some beautiful jellies I'd like to show you how to make, which are very interesting. So we got a lot of interesting things we could do. Not only dehydrating and canning and making breads and dealing with cultures and stuff, the kitchen is so active with life. I mean, when my sons come in here, they don't know what to do. They actually get lost in the kitchen. Mommy, what can and what can I not touch? <sighs> So it's really nice. I like a kitchen that's active like this. I like to see desserts laying around. I like to have the breads going. I like to see the canned goods going. All of these beautiful smells just come through. And if you've got a family, my God, your children go crazy because they never know what mommy's going to pull out next. Anyway, I'll see you when we get ready to shape them and do more with this bread. Okay, I am going to make a part two for the rest of the bread because I am making uh, shrimp in a spaghetti sauce because that's what we're going to have today and I want to get that going because I don't want to be cooking in the afternoon because I've got other things I have to do. So part two, we'll finish this up.